So I started looking at my own life and why I was making certain decisions in my personal life. Mm -hmm. And that's all because of Loveline and Dr. Drew and not being afraid to speak to a professional if you have something going on in your mind or you're Absolutely. doing something in life that's a pattern that if you asked an outsider, is that normal? Like, no, you're doing, why are you doing this? Yeah, I mean, that is so important. Mental health is so important and reaching out for help is so important. It's just becoming somewhat accessible and known, but that that's so important that you say that. And I think show that kind, that show was so important because of that. And just in general, hearing people like you and anybody in the spotlight talk about it, because especially people that have the ear of young, young audience, where the young audience isn't exposed to what mental ish health issues are, what they're dealing with, how to get help, how to reach out. That, it, that's huge. And I, I appreciate you mentioning that because that is so big for for our society. And it is. you do have knowing you personally, but even professionally and watching you, you do have a genuine concern for others and you do have a big heart where you want to see others do well. You want to see it. So that must have been quite draining being on that show, hearing, seeing these real problems because yeah. you're an empathetic, compassionate person. So I, that's had to be a hell of a life growing experience for sure. And it was. It yeah. was. So anything else in your career that you want to do that you haven't done? There's things like, okay, I mean, I know you'd like to play for the Dodgers. And <laughs> maybe 20 years ago, you had a chance. But are, are there other things you want to do in your career? I mean, is TV, movies, or is it like you just love radio and that's you can't imagine doing anything else? Like, let's hear about your dreams. All right. What do you want to do when you grow up? You know, I, in the beginning of my career in Los Angeles, I liked doing TV loved radio now i love radio and i love being on tv i oh, see so love them both i love it um i my fingers are crossed i get some more tv opportunities yeah um i just finished 115 episodes of a show if you anyone has direct tv it's called audience yes. music there's one band an episode super in-depth interviews and they play in between the interview. Yeah, I but love the, that. The artists really let their guard down on the show. It's called Audience Music. But I would like that? that is Audience Music on Direct TV, channel 334. Yeah. It's the same station that Dan Patrick is on. Yeah. No, uh, it's an amazing insider's look at these is. artists. They, yeah. They know you, so they're comfortable. They drop their guard. They're talking about stuff that they don't usually talk about. Right. You bring it out of them. That's part of what you do, and you have the credibility and the experience. But Thanks, yeah, that's Steve. a very, um, that was a very cool show. You did how many episodes? I think like 115 of those. And is that, they're done with, they're done? I think it's done. You think it's done? I you would don't. say 99.99% .99 done, but 115 is a good run. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of work, and we had everybody from, Rick Ross to Keith Urban and Corn, Melissa wow. Etheridge and Cheryl Crow to 311. Across the genre. Panic at the Disco, you name it. The Coachella yeah. Blue Oyster Cult. We Blue had. Oyster Cult? Yes. You got did. tickets to Blue Oyster Blue Cult. Oyster. You got tickets to Blue Oyster Cult. Fast Times at Richmond High. Yes. I don't know if these guys even know what we're talking about. But, uh, wow. Well, that's, that's your little the Coachella a good looking kid. All the different genres, it doesn't matter. It it's doesn't like what matter. moves people, right. what has a message, what yeah. has a feel or mood. It doesn't matter what genre. 